Folks, this is Jay Michaels, and I'm back with Lynn Shea. Now, Lynn talked about her her start in the theater. And if you if you take 30 seconds and Google her name, the list goes on and on and on of television, of film, of stage work. It's really impressive. Lynn, how did you get into this business? What 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 made you step on stage for the first time? What made you step in front of a camera? Tell us, tell us about tell us about your 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 life your life on the in the theater. I think my life in the theater started in my bedroom <laughs> when I was when I was about four. I, I, seriously, I I mean I I lived in a neighborhood where there were not a lot of kids, and I used to color a lot. I, my mother was so and my mother was you know busy housewife and um she was a great mom, but she left me. But you know if I wanted to be by myself, there was no issues about. It wasn't scary like it is today out there. I could go ride my bike around the around the big tree and it was fine. And you didn't have to worry about your kid as much as people do now. But anyway, so but I loved my stuffed animals. I had a, a, a I had twin beds and one bed was all stuffed animals. I had Sleepy Head. I had Bruno. <laughs> I had Bobby. Bobby was my brother, but I also had an animal named Bobby. Of course, it was a monkey. <laughs> of course. Um, of course. So. Um, and so I used to, so I have my coloring books and my, and she used to give us scissors and crepe paper. And I, so I'd make things. I mean, that was the other thing. I still like doing that too, but I would always do these plays. I would make up stories and I had these, I had closets with two French, two, two long mirrors and I would take my animals and they would be the characters. And I would make up stories with my care, with my with my family, with my animals, and they would be sort of serials because then my mother would call me to do something, and so I would say, "Okay, I'll be back." <laughs> <He> continued. <laughs> right, there was a commercial coming up, <laughs> and I would sort of come back and t and literally t take it up where I'd left off. And my father also um, used to tell me Candyland stories. Um, my dad used to um, and. He would. It was always before I went. But actually, it's in my show about my dad. Um, he used to come in and he'd start to tell me Candyland stories about a little girl named Linda. There'd be a tap, tap, tap on her window, and a little horse would come in. He was very fantastical. And my dad was a, in the grocery business. I mean, he wasn't a writer. He became an artist later in his life, a painter, and he was a phenomenal writer actually. But this was the fifties. You know, we were very. It was a very typical fifty, 50 household. And um, yes, I am that old. <laughs> and you know what? I'm happy to be here and I'm doing what I'm doing. So that's the other part of that program. But anyway, so um, so he would tell me stories at night and he would get my mind. He, he kept me alive uh, in my imagination always. And so I, when I think about it, my imagination was really stimulated tremendously by my family. My mother was giving me things to make and do and to express myself. Nothing was censored. They would let me do it. I would do these these treasure hunts around the house where my girlfriend and I, we'd write notes and plant them all over the house for each other. And my father would be downstairs reading the paper and we'd have string. We were tying around his ankle <laughs> and running over the chandelier because <laughs> you had to follow the thread to find the next note. And so, really, so, you know, kids today have, what do they have? You, they have that piece of doo-doo, which I call it, that the phone and the tablet and the phone and the phone. This, I think that robs you of your imagination. When I grew up, I was, I was taught to be a storyteller. Basically, I was allowed to be a storyteller. And so it's, it's logical that it is filtered into my, and thank God, it's, it's followed me into my adult life. I'm still able to very emotional to to go back to those places so i've been given a gift by my family it's it's sort of like i uh, uh i i think of the line i think uh i think it was uh da vinci I, was it da vinci no it was michelangelo somebody somebody asked him he was staring at a, at a block of stone and they and he was just staring at it and and they said what are you doing he says i'm working yeah and yeah. yes we, we look at these pictures on the phone and it's done for us Back then, you take your doll, you take you take your bed, you take whatever, and you're working. You create these. And you could take your doll and shake her. <laughs> Nobody gets upset. You know that's yeah. important too. <laughs> yep. So, and how did okay? So 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 there you are in your bedroom. You 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 you've decided. Okay, I want to I want to play with my dolls for the rest of my life, and you do. And how did you make the leap into into the theater and and film? 
Okay, so I actually remember. So I, I think it was kindergarten or whatever. There was a play. You know, they were going to put on a play. And it didn't occur to me that to like, now I'm going to stand up. So it's just like became, they wanted me to be a rabbit. <laughs> So I, so so and all these other kids behind me and radio. So I just got down on the floor and started scampering around. And the teacher thought, "That's there's a rabbit right there." And and then and you know, she, and she said, "What sound does a rabbit make?" And I said, "I knew it didn't make a sound. Rabbits don't have a sound." And all I did was, and she said, "So I thought." And no, I mean, I didn't know it then, but I was I was tuned in to observation of, of of other things, which was sort of that. And I also was it was not at all intimidated by pretending to be something other than myself. And I liked it. I liked being other things. I liked pretending to be other people and have voices. And I remember once in summer camp, I this thing where I would go. Um, uh, uh, I, I, it was, I was like, yeah, I was supposed to play like a, a, a bad person. I don't remember. I just remember I was the only one. I got the part because I would go, yeah, you stink. And the, the, everybody goes like, yeah, you stink. And they thought, and I got the part. <laughs> so I think it was slowly, it was being, um, it was being award, you know, sort of rewarded for, for silly behavior. I mean, which is kind of what that is when you think about what acting is. It is kind of silly behavior. You know, learning to tell a story and break down a character becomes much more sophisticated as you get older, of course, and learn what what acting really can be. But that was, I liked being, you know, I it was I was the kid who could make noises in class without distracting the class, but would make everybody laugh. Mm. That's very powerful for a child, you know, to have that. And so I liked it. I was good at pretending to be other things. That's that's the nice way of putting it. If if I can I can translate that into you have the bravery that is needed to be on stage and to be on film. So many of us, we have this gate where we're taught, Shh, don't do that. Don't say that. Yeah. Don't whatever. But just for you to say, yeah, yeah. you stink. Yeah. That shows there's a, there's a bravery. There's a guts in you. And when you step into an audition, if you don't have that guts right there, no matter who is 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 casting, no matter who's behind the table, uh, if they see that bravery, that gets you in the door and and obviously you pounded that door down well that was that's really you know and there was another one too i remember i used to go because they want somebody stupid and i'll go Duh. and you know they would go look at her face and i didn't even know i was making a face so i you're right the brave i never thought about it as being brave i also think it's about being free and i i, I really do I, i'll always thank my mom and dad because i wasn't restrained i was you know i was I had boundaries, you know, I mean, I couldn't be, and, and it was again, a very sort of classical family setup where I was the little girl. I had a big, I have a big brother and he had his place. The little girl had her place. I had cute dresses and all that from my mom, but, but um, I was allowed to express myself. And my mother, if my mother had been in another world, she probably would have been an actress. She was really wow. an expressively emotional woman um, that, that she paid for in many respects in that time period where you weren't supposed to be that expressive and that frank about what you say about things and people. And she was, she was a wonderful woman. I mean, I loved my mom and she gave me a, she gave me a um, courage to be a, to be a, not just to be a girl. That was the gender thing was never talked about in my house either. It was never, you're the girl. So it was just, you're a person, you're a person. We all have feelings. We all have our place and the way we behave with each other. But it was never that now you're a little, now you have to act that way. She had a little bit of it because she gave me these little dresses I had to wear. Of course. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sort of digressing, but. Not at all. Not at all. You Again, once again, you parents out there, when, you're, when your kid shows talent, don't Let suppress them. it. Yeah. Building the bravery changes the world. And, and you're a prime example of it. So, so thank, thank your parents and thank you. Well, thank you. That's that's the nicest thing almost anyone's ever said to me. So thank oh, you. <laughs> my absolute pleasure. Now your show, Tripping Tripping on Life. Yep. Uh, the website to get tickets, it, it goes into preview September 2nd? Yeah, September 8th is September first 8th. preview. And it opens on September 18th uh, at, the, on the, at Theater Row, 410 West 42nd Street, New York City. There you and go. Uh, your tickets are available. It's one word, trippingonlifetheplay.com. And I hope, oh, I hope you'll come. It's a really, 
it's a, a, a real p heartfelt piece uh, that I didn't even know I could write. Oh, it would be great. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. I'm going to remember that story for a long time and I'm going to use it when I speak to people. You know what Lynn Shea said to me? I'm going to use that story. Thank you. Thank you.